Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at the Aggro Blood deck. Why not? Aggro Blood, quite popular, still does quite well, and is a very quick deck if you're looking just to rank up either quickly or you're just looking to get through matches really quickly. So if you're on a time crunch, this is a great deck for that. Nothing much to say, it's pretty much running a bat burn engine. So you're running your Vanias, your Summon Bloodkins, you could even swap out the Demonics if you wanted and put in Hungering Hordes, but I found Demonics a little bit more consistent personally. And of course the Urias packages along with, you know, Blood Wolf and all those early game cards. I am running a Triple Big Knuckle Triple Saber. Saber's a great card for damage and healing, Big Knuckle's a good clear. Of course the 6 drop in Plancer, it's aggro blood, gotta run that. Soul Dominator, a one of. I'm running this over anything else because the storm damage is better than having to wait to your vengeance and a lot of time the games are so quick that by the time you get to 7 they've spent most of the turn trying to clear your board and you're not quite in vengeance. So this is a great card just to deal that extra 4 damage, 6 with the evolve which is just that slightly bit better than the implanter and has the potential to be bigger so one soul dominator is plenty for when it is needed. Most of the time it's not, but when it is, it's great to have. Disagree Disagreeable Demon, a great ward and also a great aggro card. Works in both situations of, hey, I'm behind, I need something to defend my board, and hey, I'm ahead, I need to hit face. So just a good little card to have. Very versatile, probably one of my favourite cards. So we'll get right into some games and we can go over some stuff. Okay, so the first game is against Rune. I think we have a couple of rune games and a haven matchup. Rune isn't too bad versus any variant. You have a pretty good chance at winning, I would say. Mainly because you are super aggro and most rune decks are pretty slow. Well, well not slow. I suppose they just don't have the stuff to deal with the boards that you can produce. So having a one drop is pretty crucial. Being able to have that in your opener is pretty advantage. Uh, going first also helps quite a lot. Going second obviously you are put on the back end of the tempo plays. Situation like this you're pretty safe you know playing Urius out doesn't really hurt anything. Especially when they've only got a one drop on board. I do choose to go with Noble. Great little defensive card. Like you said again, a great thing if you want to stop aggro, also combos nicely with Vania and sets up more board presence, so I mean, why not? Good card, can't really go too wrong. Fortunate drawing to the Vania with the Summon Bloodkin, pick up a couple more damage. Pity we weren't going second there because the evolve would have been amazing. We would have been able to kill that grimly in no problem, but instead I decide to take the trade and go face. I mean, they're probably going to use the Goblin to kill the Urius, but that means they're more likely to maybe leave the Vanya. Not, not entirely possible. I mean, it looks like they're running a neutral rune, so not a bad test case for this deck. Your mulligans, like I said, looking for early 1 drops, maybe 2 drops. Maybe even your 3 drops if you've already got a 1 and 2 drop. Otherwise, you really want a mulligan for those, those 1 and 2 drop range cards. You, like I said, it's an aggro deck, and you do want to push face as much as possible. The board isn't your biggest concern if you are already in a good spot with health. You do want to just be hitting that face and forcing them to trade into your board, thus not taking hardly any damage while also dealing a shit ton of damage. Luckily, Implanter and Blood Wolf are both a nice way to set up against this. I mean, it is a two turn lethal, but it's the best we can probably do. They are gonna fully trade the board here though. Luckily, 20 health even with a 13 damage, 15 potential once we include the evolve, we're still in a pretty nice spot. I mean, Implanter is for 5, if they don't tr yeah, trade into it, then they die, pretty straightforward. If they do trade into it, they still buy the Blood Wolf. The only chance they had was a ward, and by the looks of it, they did not have that in their hand. And if they did, they just decided not to play it. So they PK, push face damage, oh yeah, they're on 9, next turn win. Nope, Blood Wolf straight to the face. Being within a 3 damage range against Blood is never a good thing. You, you're pretty much always going to win if you get your opponent down to 3. I mean, the amount of cards you have that can deal that sort of damage is crazy. So. 
Most of these games are pretty quick, after all it is an aggro deck. This one is Haven, probably one of your worst matchups, unless they are Stormhaven, in which case it's not so bad. I mean, Stormhaven you can usually out aggro before they can play anything. Um, you also have an alright chance against Seraph as long as they don't have all their removal in their hand. If they just draw a kind of amulet or just kind of a Seraph based hand, then they're not going to be doing much to you. Biggest cards to watch out for, obviously, being Priest. You gotta be careful against that. This hand is pretty average, no one drop, it's pretty weak. But everything else actually works out. I mean, we have 9 damage worth of burn damage, which can be played for turn 5 to 6 pretty well. Sorry, 4 to 6, because we do have. Scarlet to take up turn 5, so that's 11 damage over 3 turns. And turns where they don't really matter. So this Grail Demon, as stated, great for both aggro and for ward. In a matchup against Haven, especially when in the early game they have hardly any board normally, you can deal some real damage with it. Unfortunately, the banishment is something that you've got to expect. I mean, they're going to hit you with it. So I could have played the Demonic Strike on turn 4, dealt 3 and left them like that, but because they left, left me no other choice, playing the date is probably my better option. I mean, it got this Lion out, which is good, something we can deal deal with using Scarlet, and if they had brought the date up, it would have been 5 more damage to their face, which would have put them in a really bad spot. So Scarlet, great for trading, I mean, the Bane effect is crazy. Pretty much guarantees that they're going to have to trade. We also have another Scarlet, so our health, not our biggest problem right now. The Implanter for 6 is probably going to be our best play, I mean, we get that 5 damage burst out. Although the Demonic Strike into the... Blood Wolf actually ends up being slightly better. I mean, we get 7 damage off that instead of the 5 we would have got off the Implanter. Which is just that, you know, 2 damage better. Which is what we kind of needed. We've got plenty of damage in hand, we just need to get there. Not so fortunate, they play the Curate. I have to take a kind of risk playing this Implanter. I mean, they've got a 5 5, 4 4, and a 2 1. So that's a total of 11 damage, so they only need 3 to finish me off. The odds of them having 3 damage in what seems like a control ad oriented deck is a lot smaller. So I do decide to take it. I mean, next turn we can go for lethal, and no doubt they're going to target the board more than anything if they just don't already have a way to deal with it. Which means we can pretty much just Demonic Strike and Race Street straight to their face. Luckily no extra healing. So that wasn't something I had to worry about. And we killed them before an Igus drop. But thanks to Sisters Initiate, I would assume it was probably a Seraph deck. So even if they had a went Seraph, they probably were going to lose. <laughs> and our final matchup, another rune match. I mean, rune matches aren't always bad. This one I'm pretty sure is an Earthrite. Maybe it's one of those hybrid decks. I'm not 100% sure. Because, you know, early game, pretty much win. So, we start out with a good hand. Two, two two drops and a one drop. Not the best one drop, but definitely will do the job. And we draw the double demonic strike. It's not always great to draw a double of that. I mean, turn four and five, or even turn eight. They're always good. Demonic strikes, three damage burn. Could be better, I mean, a 3 damage, uh, 3 cost, sorry, 3 damage spell would be much, much better, but I'll settle for the Demonic Strike as it is. So they do decide to go for that Urius, they want that thing dead, they don't want Urius on the board at all. On the plus side though, we do have double Vania, and we can kill off this 2-1 pretty easily. Also, well, since we're going second, we have the turn 4 Evolve, meaning Double Vania Evolve is actually a legitimate play. But we may draw into something else, which would be better, so we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. And we draw into Sound Bloodkin, just a little bit better than playing Double Vania here. I mean, Double Vania would give us 2 damage, this gets us 3. It also fills our board and leaves us with the option to use another Vania later, so 
Sometimes you're just better off using a single Vania than using a double Vania. You can also deal three using the Urius. Not the Urius, sorry, the Hate. Wrong card. But it does get us that much closer. Fortunately, since our board is full, we don't get that extra proc, but that is okay. I mean, we don't always need the extra proc on the on the board. But Forest Bed Evolve, I mean we get 7, 8, 9, plus an extra 3. So, total of 12 damage that turn, setting them to 1, which means they're dead too. Vania, Demonic Strike, Influencer, and the board, so there's not much you can do against that when that's the case. They do their best though to clear this out completely, but they don't know that in our hand, Hydra is exact lethal in any shape or form. And that rounds out Aggro Blood. So this is probably one of my favorite decks if most of you guys who have been on the channel for a long time haven't noticed. I've done this deck in pretty much every variation possible at this point over the course of the last few expansions, mainly kicking it off in DE and going all the way up till now. This deck has always served me well in both Master and in the early game, so I hope it will serve you guys well. It's only ever needed a few adjustments here and there, and it's always ready for a new meta, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that like button and subscribe. As always, deck list in the description below, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.